The Squid Sample is a powerful Eurorack sampler, designed with drums and percussion in mind. However, due to its flexible feature set, we can use the Squid for many other purposes, some entirely unexpected. Today, we will explore the Squid Sample's abilities beyond its typical use. We will look how to make a simple echo, pitch shifting delays, a multi-tap stereo delay, live audio looper and more. This is the first of several videos exploring the depths of the squid sample. In the future, we will look at other techniques involving granular loops, wavetables, CV sequencing and drum slicing. Before getting started, make sure your firmware is up to date. The first and largest topic to explore is the creation of delay effects. Since we have 8 channels and many configuration options per channel, it is possible to create some very complex and interesting delays. To start out, let's just make a simple single channel echo. The initial patch is fairly specific but once we get it going, improvisation can take the starting idea into numerous different directions. This is the setup. It's simple, but important to get right. We will use channels 1 and 2, 1 being the record head and 2 being the playback head. Pamela's new workout will act as the clock source and we will need a mixer like the Tangled Quartet for creating the feedback loop. Start by patching out from the audio source into the mixer, in this case a Kemi's Castle to Tangled Quartet. Then take the mix output into the Squid's audio input. The final output will come from the Squid's mix out jack. This is the audio patch to create a single repeat delay. Next, we will set up the clock which drives our delay. We will simply duplicate a single clock from Pamela to both the channel 2 trigger input and the record enable gate input. The clock serves the purpose of engaging records to channel 1 and triggering playback from channel 2 simultaneously. At this point, the updated firmware comes into play. We are now able to set a record lock to a channel of our choosing, allowing us to use all the other channels while recording occurs in the background. To lock record into channel 1, make sure it is selected and press the record button once to arm. Then hold the channel button and press record once more. DST1 should appear, indicating that our record destination is locked to channel 1. Now we are free to adjust the other channel settings during recording. The next step is to set our playback channel to reference our record head. In this case, we want channel 2 to play back the audio being recorded into the channel 1 buffer. To do this, make sure channel 2 is selected and hold the channel button. Then turn the encoder until a small number 1 appears on the screen. This graphic indicates the reference of channel 1's audio. It is possible to reference any channel with any other channel, and multiple channels may all reference one. This is an essential setting for creating delay effects with the squid sample. Hold function and press record to engage record monitoring. This will let the dry signal through. Now engage the clock to start recording and playback. This will just act as a single repeat delay. The final step is to patch the feedback path. Take a cable from the 1 and 2 output into the input mixer. This patch lets us just feed the playhead back. Once we bring up channel 2 of the mixer, we start to hear a familiar echo effect. Here 
Here we have added a sequence and envelope to make a more complete patch. We are free to begin experimenting with the echo now. Make sure to watch input levels to the squid, especially when using feedback. We can see here that we are recording in the background to channel 1. Go ahead and hit the channel button to move around the channels and notice that the sound doesn't change. Normally recording would move on to the selected channel when the lock is not engaged. Let's go back to channel 2 and start to mess it up. First we will adjust sample rate. This is only applied to the delay repeats. It will be easier to hear these changes with a slower delay time. Changing time is as simple as turning down the clock rate. Let's change the playback speed which will actually create a pitch shift in delay. We can shift pitch up and down. Shifting down very slightly creates a nice spooky vibe, especially with the castle. The next thing to try is splitting the clock drive and recording and playback. Let's trigger channel 2 from another clock out on Pamela. The two clocks have a triplet relationship here, adding a nice bounce to the delay. As with many patches, changing settings and experimenting leads to interesting new places. Here, the relationship between clock speed, pitch and feedback are very important to the sound. By nature, using a sampler to create a delay effect will produce a very clean digital sound. But since we are patching our own feedback path, we have a great opportunity to shape that sound. The most obvious technique is to patch feedback through a low pass filter to darken the repeats. This is where the effect really starts to sound authentic, as many delays throughout history include some sort of natural or added filtering to the repeats. Remember, feedback can get out of hand if we don't compensate for tonal changes. If you have a compressor module, try patching that in the feedback loop for automatic dynamics control.
again, changing the clock, speed of recording, playback and the sequencer really alters the sound of the effect. Now it's time to further explore the pitch shifting delay. We have moved the delay patch over to channel 6 due to its dedicated volt per octave knob and CV input. We will demonstrate in a moment why this is the preferred setup for pitch shifting delays. Sometimes, especially with pitch shifting delays, the repeats can get choppy since they are playing back faster than the recording fills the buffer. One technique is to engage loop on the playhead channel which will fill the gaps and give the repeats a much smoother sound. Now, let's go into quality and engage quantization on the pitch knob. If we select OT, it will step in octaves, giving us a much more usable pitch shifting delay. It is also helpful to look at the start and end time settings in relation to the audio filling the buffer. This can help to smooth out the delay sound as well. Delay on this wood sample is certainly a delicate balance of parameters, but once it gets going, exploration and discovery of new sounds is inevitable. We are also able to quantize to semitones rather than octaves in the quality menu. Of course, delays do not have to stay mono. Here, the stereo out is coming from the 5 and 6 and 7 and 8 individual outputs and the feedback loop is created from the mix out. Our source is looping internally on channel 1 and being recorded back on channel 2 with recording locked. If we start to loop and adjust start and end times on the playback channels, a sort of granular effect starts to emerge. 
Keep in mind there is also a delay line on channel 3 that is included in the feedback loop only. It helps to add some wash to the repeats here. Let's add another tap. All we have to do is patch another signal to trigger channel 7 and set it to reference our recording on channel 2. As more delay lines or taps are added, a busier soundscape emerges. Let's change that record trigger speed. This gives us a larger buffer time that will granularize the full sample. Here we have expanded use to all eight channels in the patch. Delay lines are playing back from channels 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. When exploring delay on the squid, it is almost certain the effect will evolve into something completely unique due to the open-ended nature of working with such a patch.
Here we have an alternative sort of delay patched up. It is actually more of a live channel sequential looper. It is set up utilising the channel button's gate input. Patching a steady clock to step sequentially through the channels allows us to automate the record destination. Effectively, we are recording to channel 1, then channel 2, then channel 3, continuing on to channel 8, then back around to 1 with each clock pulse. Each channel will hold on to the audio from its little piece of the recording. Of course, make sure record lock is off since we want each channel to be available for recording. In order for this to work right, we need to go to each channel and turn on looping. To quickly do this, we can use a shortcut to change channels but remain on the same setting. Hold channel while on a settings page and turn the encoder. Notice the channel number at the top left change. We can quickly set up each channel to loop using this shortcut. Once we double check that all the channels are set to loop, we can return to the channel page and start to engage playback. There are no triggers patched, but we can start each channel manually by clicking the encoder on its associated page. Once we start Palmer's clock, sequential recording to the channels will begin. Now any changes we make to the input sounds will be reflected at a later time by the channels playing back. Make sure to watch for clipping as with the earlier patches. If we want to hold all 8 loops, we can just stop the clock and disengage recording. They will loop indefinitely. Subtle changes are reflected nicely in this patch. Recording slow filter sweeps creates a nice ambience that turns into a fluttery wash. We have been monitoring in stereo by taking two to a side from the four channel pair outputs. Now let's set up a master sample rate control using the first CV input. Remember we can use one signal to control many things at once on the squid, we just have to assign it. First we need to create an offset voltage, we can actually use Pamela's new workout to do this. In channel 5 we will turn down the level to 0 and set offset to 100. Now we should have a steady 5 volt at the output. If we patch this through the Tangle Quartet we can easily alter the offset voltage. Patch the offset into the first CV input. Now we can assign it to the sample rate for each channel. Once again we will use the sample switching shortcut of holding the channel button and turning the encoder. Once they are all assigned, we can alter our offset voltage to control the sample rate of all 8 channels at once. Pitch shifting the loops differently results in some strange chords and other effects. Here we are setting up CV to control the loop size for all channels. This time we are patching another offset to CV input 2 on the squid. Thank you. 
This is a simpler version of the same looper patch. This time it's more about the pitch settings of each channel. We are only using the mix output here so that there is a more uniform delay style effect occurring. Here is a patch that evolved from our delay experiments. The recording setup is the same. It is started and stopped with a clock from Pamela's channel 8. The rest of the outputs are patched to trigger channels. The castle is being recorded into channel 1 and recording is locked in the background. There is no feedback path. The key to this patch is the triggering. Pamela's new workout is set to fire triggers on channels 1 to 7 that are 15% out of phase from one another, resulting in sequential playback across channels 2 to 8 on the squid. The goal is to record audio into the buffer on channel 1 and reference that buffer with all 7 other channels. Then we can alter the pitch and tone for each playback channel, like a sequencer for live audio. This patch is acting more like sample playback than delay, because we also have a shortened decay envelope on every channel. Let's begin. Record monitor is off so we only hear playback channels. Now we can come in and change pitch per channel to create a little sequence. If we want to remove a step, we can just unplug or mute that trigger. Let's change the patch slightly by bringing in some overlap of channel playback. We can do this by lengthening the decay envelope on each channel. We can also add a slower attack time to fade the channel in. Make sure you have the latest firmware as this was a recent addition.
Here we have slowed everything down and have even longer attack and decay times. The channels are all tuned differently and there are some attenuated LFOs from the two pip slopes patched into the pitch of channels 6 and 7 for a slight vibrato effect. It turns the droning FM sounds from Akemi's Castle into a strange out of tune polyphonic synth. of ways to go with a patch like this, which is very dependent on source material and could certainly be explored even further. This is the first part of our deep dive into the squid sample's many capabilities. These patches are not exhaustive and could of course be explored even further. Due to the open-ended nature of the squid, many hybrid patches are possible, with half of the channels being used for one function and the remaining for another. The layout allows the user to choose if channels are independent or grouped for a specific function. The squid sample could function like many different modules simultaneously. In the next part of the deep dive, we will look at even more possibilities, such as creating a wavetable style oscillator, pseudo granular sampling and time stretching, generating CV sequences, chopping drums with cue sets and more. Thanks for watching ALM TV. We'd love to hear about your ideas and patches using the squid sample. Stick them in the comments below.